right? Now we're going to start a new chapter on uh, combinatorial newsflanger. This technique, this algebraic technique was developed by Arlon and Tarsi. So uh, let me describe this theorem. So this is due to Arlon and Tarsi in 92. And which will be really useful. And this is also about polynomials, roots of polynomials. So let's so let F be a field and F is a polynomial. Polynomial with n variables. Now, suppose that the degree of f is some of these things and the coefficient of the monomial product of xi to the di's power, I mean xi to the di, is non-zero okay now what can you say now let's say l1 l2 ln be the subsets of f with li size of li bigger than uh, di the degree of that monomial with respect to the ice variable then here's the conclusion there exist assignments a1 in l1 a2 in l2 and an in ln such that when you evaluate this polynomial then it's going to be non-zero and this theorem or lemma is called the uh, uh, combinatorial newsflanger and whenever we use this I mean there are many many applications of this theorem so I'm gonna show you the proof I mean, the proof is an easy induction so it's induction on n so what happens if n is 1 that means when you have only one variable x1 and then f is a polynomial of degree d but l1 has more than d elements so you have a polynomial of degree d and the x oh uh, yeah and the coefficients of x to the d's power is non-zero so you have a most d distinct root since it's degree d polynomial so if you have a d plus one no if you have a set of more than d elements one of them at least one of them is not a root so f of a1 is non-zero right so it's trivial if d is equal to one no n is equal to one now uh, we may assume so we can assume so uh, we may assume and it's bigger than one and we can also assume that ln has exactly the m plus one element because if we have more than the m plus one then we can just ignore one right and the conclusion is same now let's define f of n xn this is polynomial that's gonna be the product of xn minus t where t is in l n
Now we're gonna. So this is what this is degree degree d n plus one, right? Now, uh, by expanding Fn, we can write uh, Fn equals, okay, so Fn xn equals x tend to the tn plus 1 uh, minus hn xn. Of course, right? Because uh, the this is the term when you obtain by multiplying all these things, and then this is the remaining terms. So where hn xn is a polynomial of degree and most dn. Yes. Now we reduce f to get f tilde by replacing xn to the dm plus 1 with xn uh, with hn xn. So this this term is degree dm plus 1 term, but we're going to reduce it to a polynomial of degree at most dn. So this will decrease the degree of the polynomial and degree of the monomial. So re repeatedly replace xn to the dm plus 1 to this lower order, lower degree polynomial. So what can you observe? Then, uh, I mean, observe that fn of x is zero if x is in ln, which means that x to the d's power, dn plus one's power is equal to hn x if x is in ln so since we are interested in the solution where x belongs to ln so it doesn't matter even if we replace x into the dm plus 1 to uh, uh, hn so once we apply this repeatedly we get a lower order polynomial So then f x1, fx2 is equal to fx1, xn whenever, whenever xn is in ln, of course, right? And what about the coefficient? The coefficient of x1, d1, x2, d2, xn, dn in f is equal to the coefficient of x1, d1, x2, d2, xn, dn in f tilde y. Why are they equal? First of all, if, if I start with uh, this monomial and then uh, this replacement this replacement will never happen here right? because if it happens then I don't know I mean this degree is too small right if you have dn plus 1 then we are replacing but here you only have a dn so you never replace and the thing is also the hn has lower degree than that and this has maximum degree some of di is 
is exactly D. So whenever you obtain some lower, I mean, whenever you, after you replace all the polynomials you get, all the monomials that are effect, affected by this will have a degree less than D, strictly less than D. This has degree exactly D, so you never create a monomial of degree D. So that's why we are preserving the coefficients. Okay? All right. So now, now we write f tilde as a sum of the polynomials uh, in terms of x n. Let's say x n to the i from 0 to d n and uh, we have a g i x1 x2 right so this is a uh, simply you collect all the terms according to the degree of the xn then the degree of gi is what? Now oh, let's look at degree of gn. It is exactly t1 plus t2 plus dn minus 1, right? So by induction, So by the induction hypothesis, there is, I mean, there exists A1 in L1, A2 in L2, AN in L, AN minus 1, LN minus 1, such that GN of A1, A2, AN minus 1 are non zero. Okay? Oh, well, actually not, not N. Uh, yeah, let me fix this. G D N, right? G D N. That's that's the the degree of this polynomial. Yeah, I mean. This number goes all the way up to dn. So what does that mean? That means let's fix a1 up to an. No, fix a1 up to an minus 1. Then f is a polynomial of degree dn. So the number of roots is at most dn. And the it's non-zero polynomial because the coefficients of the highest order term is non-zero. So there is an in ln such that f tilde, no, oh, I should say f tilde. F tilde a1, a2, an is non zero. Okay, so that's the proof. So we are using the fact that uh, low order polynomial, low degree polynomial uh, cannot have too many roots. All right, so in the following few sections, we're gonna discuss applications of this lemma. Okay.